Welcome to Chemistry with Caroline. In this video, we're going to look at how to interpret a GCMS. So GCMS is two instruments interface to one another. The GC stands for gas chromatography, and that works to separate out components of a mixture. This is handy because often we have a complex mixture and we want to get a mass spectrum for each individual component so that we can easily analyze them. So the top part here comes from the GC. This is the chromatogram you can see here. And a peak is observed for every unique molecule that's in the mixture. So there's one molecule here, and there's a different molecule there. So they're separated out from one another based on polarity, so that we don't have this complex mixture all coming into the mass spec at the same time. And so this bottom axis is time, the retention time, so how long that molecule stayed in the column. And you can see if we move down to the mass spec, which is the bottom box here, that there's a retention time associated with this mass spec. So this peak here, that's at 7.845 minutes, this is the mass spec that goes with it. So we'll go to the next slide and take a closer look at how we can get information from the mass spec. So I've zoomed in on my mass spectrum here, and we're looking at this molecule, metafluoroethylbenzoate, and it weighs 168 grams per mole. As an organic chemist, you're typically looking for proof of the molecule in the form of a parent ion that matches your compound and maybe one or two fragments that are indicative of, of your molecule. And so this weighs 168 grams per mole. If all that happened upon being hit by a beam of electrons was that one electron popped out, you would see a parent ion at the very top of the spectrum with the mass of the entire molecule because the electron weighs so little that the sensitivity of the instrument is not going to detect the loss of an electron. And up at the top here, you do see a peak at 168, and that is the parent ion. And when we mark up a GCMS, the way that we draw the parent ion is with brackets around it, and we draw it as a radical cation. So it's got like an unpaired electron there and then a positive charge. So it's positive because it's lost an electron. And it's a radical because it has an unpaired electron. So it's both. And we don't know where that electron came from because a bond hasn't been broken. And so we put a bracket around the whole thing. The mass spec will only detect positively charged fragments. So anything that is coming through the mass spec is going to be a cation or a radical cation. Now, we don't need to assign every single peak on a mass spec anymore. We've got other forms of spectroscopy, like NMR spectroscopy, that tells us a lot about connectivity. But we do probably want to identify one or two other peaks in the mass spectrum to really be sure that we have the molecule that we think that we've made. So the m to z value is going to be the mass of the fragment if it has a charge of 1. So m over z is mass to charge ratio. So this fragment would weigh 123. And so when you're up at the top, one thing you can do is say, okay, the whole molecule weighs 168. So I'm going to subtract from 168 123 and I'll see how much that fragment weighs that was lost. So that weighs 45. And it turns out that an oxygen and then that ethyl group weighs 45. So if I add up the mass of O plus 2 carbons plus 5 H's, it weighs 45. So this peak resulted from fragmentation that lost that O, CH2, CH3 group. And the molecule that is responsible for this peak is this fragment. And so you can see that I have the positive charge on the actual carbon where the bond fragmented. So the fragmentation occurred across this bond right here that I just marked in green. So the ethoxy group was lost and the carbonyl carbon ended up with a positive charge. And because it's positively charged, it was directed into the mass spectrum and recorded as a fragment every time it hit the detector. And so 123 corresponds with this fragment. OK, this is getting crowded. So let's go to the next page, and we'll identify one more fragment. All right, so I've given us a little more room here. We've got the parent ion that we identified. It weighs 168, so the same as the entire molecule, because all it's lost is one electron. 
we've got this fragment where the carbon oxygen single bond fragmented and that gives us a positive charge at the carbonyl carbon. That is a very favorable fragment because it's resonance stabilized so the oxygen can fold electrons down and help to stabilize that charge across two atoms, both the oxygen and the carbon. And that's why the bar is so high. So the mass spectrum is literally a bar graph. It's just how many times each fragment hits. And the more stable the fragment, the more likely it is to occur. And so that's what you're looking at here. So let's identify one more. And it turns out that if we look at the fragmentation of that entire ester group off of there, that weighs 95. So that would leave this fragment. It's positively charged, so it would be directed to the detector and recorded every time it hits. And that gives us the bar that we see at 95. So this is a good analysis of a mass spectrum for an organic chemist. We've got a parent ion identified and then two fragments that are specific and indicative of the molecule that we think that we have synthesized. So this has been a look at how to analyze mass spec and how the GC separates those components of a mixture out from one another before they hit the mass spec. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.